Oh, hi there, Michael. Hi. Hey, Marina. All right. Welcome. Welcome to this Mapbox webinar. Uh, just going to give folks a couple minutes to arrive and get settled, and I'll go over some housekeeping notes before we dive in. So thanks for joining us today, Michael. Thanks. All right. All right. We've already got some folks popping in. Thanks, everybody, for arriving right on time. Um, let me just go over a couple little housekeeping notes for folks. So we are using Zoom for our webinar today. So there is a Q&A function for questions as well as the chat function is enabled. So as we go, if you have questions that you wanna ask Michael and we wanna cover it at the end, please use the Q&A function. That's the easiest way for us to keep track of, of what questions are coming in and make sure that we get them answered. Um, but please also feel free to use the chat function if you just have comments, if you want to share links or share where in the world you're joining from, please go ahead and use the chat as well. Um, we will be keeping an eye on both of those. If you are noticing any technical difficulties, you can send a message to the hosts and we'll try to help you out live. Um, one common technical difficulty folks have is if you can't hear audio, if you're not hearing what I'm saying right now, make sure that your browser has autoplay enabled because sometimes some of those browser settings block the audio. But otherwise, hopefully everything's working fine for folks. We're going to get started in just a few minutes um, once a few more folks arrive. But we're looking good. Alrighty. And we'll get back to our start screen here. Excellent. All right, we've got a good list of folks in here. And good morning, everybody. Let's get started. Welcome to this Mapbox webinar. I am your host, Marina Smith. And today I'm joined by special guest, Michael Mass from SciMaps. Michael is the Hi, founder and CEO of SciMaps. And SciMaps is a location intelligence solution that empowers businesses to optimize their networks of physical locations. Sounds a little abstract. We'll see how that plays out with lots of demos and examples from Michael today. So in our 30 minutes, we're gonna just have a quick introduction of Mapbox for folks who may be new to Mapbox. Then we'll learn more about SciMaps and the sorts of problems they're solving for businesses and then specifically how they're building with Mapbox and, and do some behind the scenes tour of the SciMaps interface. We will keep some time for questions from the audience. So if you're watching this webinar live, please feel welcome to ask questions for Michael through the Q&A function and we'll do our best to get to them all before the end. Alrighty. So a little bit about Mapbox. Mapbox is a location technology company that equips organizations to innovate with location data. And this takes many forms, whether it's um, daily life decisions like tracking a run with Strava or ordering food through Instacart, or maybe you're a business that's using location information to optimize aspects of your business or uh, display data layers uh, in an interactive dashboard. So the need for location intelligence really is everywhere. It permeates daily life and decision-making. And Mapbox platform exists to help different companies build with location tools. We've got close to 4 million registered developers building with Mapbox today. Um, all of those different applications and users generate their own data and their own feedback, which keeps the platform growing and improving every day and including the Mapbox movement data, which we'll hear about from Michael in the SciMaps context. So the modular architecture of the Mapbox platform means that any developer, any company can build a location intelligent application that is tailored to their needs, whether that's for web, for mobile, even within vehicles. Um, companies like SciMaps can integrate whichever pieces, map visuals, data layers, that they need for their tool. And it's really the stories of Mapbox customers that illuminate this potential of the Mapbox platform. So thank you so much, Michael, for joining us today to share more about how SciMaps is building with Mapbox. And uh, let's just dive in. Can you set the scene for us? Tell us a little bit about who is SciMaps and what is it that you're building?
Sure. Sure. So uh, nice to meet you, everyone. So uh, uh, SteamApps uh, is, is a software uh, that uh, is uh, helping people and companies and businesses uh, to take decisions uh, about locations. Uh, so, so um, uh, it's uh, it's a SaaS software, a software as a service. Uh, it's uh, it's for physical locations. So taking decisions about physical locations, brick and mortar venues, uh, infrastructure uh, locations. Uh, we are an international team. Uh, we are we are originally uh, created. Uh, we started in South Korea. Uh, the company started originally in South Korea, and uh, at the moment we are based in France. Uh, we are uh, we have also uh, offices in Taiwan and in South Korea, so in, in three countries. Uh, we have clients in forty countries uh, at the moment, um, of very different size uh, in very different industries. All of them are using uh, CMAPS uh, to help them taking decisions about uh, locations in their operations. Hey, can you tell us some more examples of customers that you work with? Yes. Uh, so uh, we uh, we work uh, with different industries at the moment. Uh, we work uh, with the uh, uh, re traditional retail industries, so uh, networks of stores uh, where you open new stores. Uh, this is a classical example. Um, also with restaurants. Uh, so let's say uh, your Domino's Pizza, your Yo Sushi, which is number one uh, sushi chain in the UK, and uh, you want to open uh, not only sushi restaurants but also corners, for example, uh, in supermarket and so on. So uh, you can use maps to achieve uh, that use case and uh, benchmark locations and take decisions. We work also uh, with. Uh, uh, electric vehicle uh, companies, uh, especially companies which are opening electric vehicle charging stations uh, through their market. Uh, so what they want to know is uh, uh, where you have more uh, 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 car traffic, where you have more pedestrian traffic, where you have less competition, where you have more people uh, driving electric vehicles. And then they want to benchmark locations uh, and take decisions. And we work also with uh, like large companies which are selling uh, different kind of goods, uh, and not directly, uh, but uh, through partners, through reselling partners. So uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, in the luxury industry or, or in the uh, vape industry, uh, you can sell your products through local stores, which are not. Uh, part of your companies, and uh, in that case, what you're uh, deciding is uh, you're deciding which store you're going to work with. So uh, CMAPS uh, is going to uh, bring you uh, with the numbers and visibility in order to select the best uh, resellers uh, for you in a certain city, in a certain market, in order mm -hmm. for you to grow as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. It's such a range. It's such a such fascinating range of different companies and different use cases, um, all using location intelligence. So I, I think, can you can you just tell us a little bit more about the types of questions and types of challenges that CIMAPS is helping clients answer? Yes, sure. So in, in CIMAPS, you you can do uh, you can do four things. Uh, the first thing you 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 do uh, is uh, you need to get a, a basic understanding uh, of a city. So uh, um, this is what we call understand. Uh, it's like you you go to Austin, Texas, uh, with a tool, and uh, you need to understand where are the hot places uh, in the city, uh, like uh, benchmark areas, which areas are more busy on Saturday evening, for example, or on Sunday afternoon, or uh, during the lunch hours uh, in the weekdays, uh, and where you have also uh, like more offices, where you have uh, more uh, such or such kind of restaurants, for example. So get a global understanding of the city. This is the number one thing you can do in CMAPS. Second thing you do is like uh, ranking and benchmarking locations. So once you get you got your your basic understanding of the city, which we are going to to do together. Uh, just a, a few a few minutes later, uh, what you need to do is like starting to pick, uh, uh, like cherry pick which locations are going 
to be the best candidate for you to open your your next venue. Uh, so you want to benchmark maybe uh, one, two, three, uh, four potential addresses for opening your new venue in the city uh, and see where it's more interesting for you in terms of uh, movement data, uh, which is coming from that box, uh, and where it's more interesting in terms of competition, uh, in terms of synergetic businesses nearby, uh, in terms of uh, demographics. Uh, so this is the second thing you do in CMAPS, uh, benchmarking specific addresses. Number three, prediction. So uh, once uh, you, you, you go to a global understanding of a city and uh, you already have a, 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 a pre-processed pipe and with, with a lot of numbers on, the, on that pipe, uh, the next thing you can do is like predict uh, how much revenue uh, you can expect to achieve uh, should you decide to um, go forward and opening a new restaurant in, in that particular address, for example. Uh, this is using like prediction models and this is, these models are inside the tool. And the last thing you do is take a decision, a business decision. So you can see that uh, CMAPS uh, will help you to go from the very, uh, the very, the, the like more uh, high, higher uh, altitude uh, view, if I, we can, one can say, like of understanding just a general city and like feel familiar about the city uh, and then um, start to uh, like uh, uh, profile and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, 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 still be more selective about your pipe uh, for like opening potential revenues. Then get what will be the, the the revenue you can expect to achieve and finally take a business decision. So from a global understanding to the final business decision. Yeah, and it sounds incredibly precise as well, address level, block by block level insights. Um, I'm sure plenty of folks listening would love to see the actual interface in action. Can you take us on a, a little tour of some examples within SciMaps? Sure. Okay, so uh, um, CMAP, so it looks um, like a website, okay, where uh, you you have uh, actually in that box uh, as a background uh, uh, math layer, and, and then you can uh, uh, display different kind of data. Okay, so here, let's say we want to understand the city, uh, which we are not familiar with, so let's uh, do it in Lyon, for example, in France. So the first thing I can do is like uh, uh, display the movement data of uh, Mapbox, uh, which is actually uh, like the number of people uh, passing by certain blocks at certain hours. Okay, so here I have a heat map which I can uh, display uh, if I want uh, in, uh, in 3D, so uh, we can see it uh, more clearly. So we can, I, I, let's say I want to find out where are the five more, most busy places uh, in Lyon. I, I just put five here, and then um, I can select specific days. So let's say I want to know where it's more busy during the weekend. I just click on weekend. Okay, so I can see like top is number one is here, number two is here, number three is here. Uh, if I just want to do it on, on Saturday, it's a, you see it's a bit different. So like one, two, three. If I want to do it like Saturday evening, mm. It's a, still a, a little bit different, or, or maybe just during like you know, like dinner hours. Okay, you can see it's, it's a bit different. So it's just about where people are, are moving in the city uh, at these hours and on Saturday. Okay, so then you you can you can know that this is the most busy part of the city. You one could say, oh, okay, this is something that is obvious, but when you don't know the city, uh, you go on Google Maps. You will know the hot places, but you will not be able to benchmark them. You will not be able to compare the volumes of people from uh, one area to another. And this is something you can do through numbers uh, and get a ranking. Okay, so um, here it's five, but if I want, I can find out like where are the ten more uh, most busy places in the city. If I want, what I can do is like uh, let's say I'm not interested uh, by like the very center of the city, but I'm more interested by, let's say, for example, uh, that part. So I can draw like a polygon uh, where it's more interesting mm -hmm. to me. 
and then I get the, the same ranking. Okay, so so like uh, this is uh, a feature that allows users to just understand where it's hot and when it's hot uh, in a certain city, and uh, you can associate the movement data from that box with other data. Okay, so for example, let's say I, I want to uh, not only see the the, the, the footfall, but I want to see also uh, information such as, uh, uh, for example, uh, like uh, restaurants or, or sushi or, or, or whatever. Uh, you can uh, input a few keywords here. Mm. Okay. And I'm going to get like all the sushi places uh, uh, in uh, in the area. Okay. So this is just like sushi, so you can do that small scale or macro, you know, like it's like sushi, sushi is in, in France. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and you can do that as well uh, for uh, the resident. So uh, let's say I want to like dive in demographics um, and I want to understand, uh, I want to understand where I have uh, maybe more students or uh, for example, um, so here is, is I, I have the number of students, and I can I can put the ranking the same. So it's like where you have more students living in, uh, uh, living in uh, Lyon. Sorry, for zooming into Malte. So you can see like number one is here, number two is here, with number three is here, and then uh, you want to associate that with, uh, for example, income level. Okay, so you're going to have an association of both. So it's like where you have the highest income level times uh, the highest number of students. Okay, so you can see it's like one here, one here. Okay, so uh, this is the basic tool, uh, just like understanding a city. Uh, and then going to step number two is like benchmarking locations. So let's say I identified like a place which is interesting to me, um, for example, here. And I want to compare it uh, with another uh, potential place, which might be interesting for opening my next sushi restaurant, for example. Um, let's say uh, let's see here. Okay, it's just random locations. So then I have A B uh, comparison. So uh, what you can see is uh, first uh, a comparison of the number of people passing by, depending on the day of the week and the hour of the day, uh, over 100 meters. Uh, so this is uh, coming from Mapbox. Uh, so this is uh, the Mapbox movement data. So we can see that uh, actually A is like definitely more busy in the late afternoon than B. But let's take a look at how it looks like on Saturday. Okay, it's even even uh, even uh, more busy. Uh, busier. And if you look on Monday, then it's more even. You can see on Monday, like uh, it's um, for lunch, it's kind of the same. Okay. Um, you can uh, do that for uh, walking or uh, by car. Um, and if you want, you can even uh, extract a report. Uh, let's say, okay, that place is really good. I want to, to, to extract a report on it. Just click on it, and, and you're going to have uh, a detailed report, which I, I won't go through now. Uh, but I mean, during that first uh, um, basic, uh, like simple features of the tool, uh, you can achieve two things. Number one is like understanding the city, which you are, you are not familiar with. Even if you're familiar with, with that city, you can add numbers on top of your of your um, uh, understanding of your existing understanding of the city, and then you can benchmark benchmark places systematically uh, by pair and extract reports uh, if you want. This works uh, in in France, but that works uh, and in the US. Here I'm in the US. Uh, you can say okay, uh, or like uh, 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 like this is like um, people in movements in New York. Uh, so uh, uh, I can uh, compare. For, uh, let's say I want to like uh, understand uh, what's happening in in Brooklyn. Okay, so I, I limit my scope to Brooklyn, and then I have a benchmark uh, uh, like a ranking of. Uh, there's a um, uh, uh, top 
busy places during, let's say, evening hours, uh, like until 11 p.m. Uh, on, let's say, uh, only weekends, for example. Uh, weekends, sorry. Okay, so, and you can see that, like, the number one is here, number two is here, number three is here. Already. Yeah. Yeah. It's and so then, fast. It's so even on even on screen share in a webinar, it's really, really snappy. It's very um intuitive of a u interface. It's really neat to see. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So here is like really about movement, but if you want, you can add other uh information. For example, uh, you want to add uh, uh like demographics uh, in the US or like income level, uh so median household uh, income. Uh, so you can see like uh, 171k here mm -hmm. and so on. I can display the ranking. I can display uh, uh, all, all the retail environment, the restaurant environment as well. Uh, okay, I won't go through it because it will be uh, a bit long, but uh, the same. You you have a city, maybe it's not your city and you want to have a, like a basic understanding of the city or it's your city. You know it already, but you want to add numbers on top of your understanding. Mm -hmm. You can do that with these basic features. You can do like pair benchmarks and extract reports. So these are like the most uh, often used feature in the tool, uh, which you can use uh, in most of European countries, in Canada, in the US, uh, in, so in South America, we have uh, more than half of South America. Uh, of course, we, we have Korea, Taiwan, because we started uh, in Asia originally. Uh, so this is an international tool which you can use for most of your markets at the moment for just under basic understanding and like simple benchmark. This is like just simple part number one of the tool if you if you pay me say. Yeah, I can imagine it uh, saving so much time doing GIS data cleaning and combining all those different data sources. Who who are the typical users of SciMaps kind of within a company? Um, do you have a particular user profile that you're building for? Uh, we have two uh, user profiles, uh, and actually three. Uh, the number one user profile is uh, like operational, uh, like expansion managers. So. Uh, is a typical uh, user is is, uh, is very mobile. Uh, it's like uh, traveling uh, in the city, in the in the state, uh, and like searching for new venues to open. So he will uh, save a lot of time just uh, by using CMAPs, which uh, kind of allows him to teleport himself into a city which is quite far, kind of far, and then get numbers. And then maybe, you know, he will uh, say, okay, I don't need to visit 10, 10 locations. I will just visit the three most interesting locations. So he saves a lot of time. And when he, he will be meeting uh, with uh, the owner uh, of, the, of the property, for example, if he wants to take, uh, to take a lease, uh, he will have numbers. So he will, he will not come uh, um, without uh, any, uh, any information. He will come with uh, an entire... Uh, uh, like a report, like a very deep, uh, like 360 degree report uh, of that particular venue. You will be able to benchmark this particular opportunity against another and probably negotiate uh, his lease, uh, ask more questions, and so on. So he saves time, uh, he saves money, and uh, he reduces a lot of the risk factors uh, because. Uh, this is uh, uh, a conscious uh, decision. He, he, all the numbers are available uh, not only for him and uh, his counterpart, but also for his team. Um, usually, uh, in many companies, uh, this kind of decision is not uh, is not a single person decision. It's a, it's a collective decision. You need to have everybody in the team agree. Uh, and like the best way to to uh, to agree is uh, to agree on facts, and like this uh, allows to associate uh, movement data, so flowing people, like moving people, uh, with uh, demographics of uh, resident resident, with the retail environment, the restaurant environment. Uh, you have a, a complete view of uh, a location. Uh, 
you have facts, and then uh, people take decisions. That's uh, uh, a lot faster and uh, easier uh, for the team. Yeah, and being able to see it yeah. like that in uh, such a compelling yeah. way. Yeah, so this is like really the, 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 the first kind of user we have. And the second kind of user we have is like people who do strategy. So people who do strategy, um, they want to look at a specific uh, street or a specific neighborhood. Also, sometimes they could, uh, obviously. But what they are, are interested in most, uh, mostly is uh, understanding an entire country and an entire market, uh, understanding uh, the, the leading actors, the existing actors, uh, their competitors, their existing uh, footprint uh, in, uh, in, that, in that country and see where they have opportunities, uh, where they have opportunities to grow, uh, where they have opportunities to like uh, 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 reinforce themselves, their existing venues, for example. So this is uh, something you can achieve uh, through the more advanced feature of the tool, which I, I, can, I can show and which is also using uh, Mapbox movement data. Mm, fantastic. Um, well, just in the interest of time as well, maybe um, could you weave in some uh, examples of why SciMaps chose Mapbox in particular, why you chose to build with the Mapbox movement data and some of the benefits that it provides to those users in these different use cases? Oh, the reason why uh, we, we decided to work with Mapbox is... Uh, is uh, 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 we, actually, we, we've been uh, working with uh, miscellaneous companies uh, in the past. Uh, so we kind of tested a lot of uh, data providers uh, and, and we benchmarked them. And, and the, the key thing is uh, to be accurate. Uh, the data is to be uh, a representative of what's really happening uh, in the street. Uh, and if you want to, to do that, you need to have a very large uh, sample uh, of telephones because this, is data, this data is coming from telephones. So um, Mapbox, as a squeeze its customers, has this uh, access. Uh, and at the same time, you need to be compliant. Uh, compliant uh, with the CCPA, compliant with GDPR, so, which means uh, uh, like not, not sharing any kind of uh, personal information, for example. So there's two, uh, there's two dimensions that are super important. Uh, and uh, we, we were able to find, to find what we were looking for, uh, starting working with Mapbox. We actually did a very deep test with Mapbox uh, data. We are very happy about it. Uh, and uh, it's exactly the kind of uh, philosophy and approach uh, we were looking for. It's like, uh, be compliant and be respectful. Uh, so, yeah. And and if I if we have a few more minutes, uh, Marina, maybe I can show like, uh, 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 something that might, uh, I, I think, uh, interest users as well uh, and, and people there. Uh, regarding the more advanced thing you can do on uh, CMAPs like really quick. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so what we just did before, like just benchmarking uh, location by pair, if you want, you can do it for an entire market. So let's say uh, I want to understand, for example, uh, all the... Uh, um, um, all the electric vehicle charging station uh, markets are in the UK, for example. So I, I can use that tool called the Finder. And then I'm going to uh, to uh, select what I want to 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 analyze. So like the UK, um, I want to analyze uh, uh, electric vehicle charging stations. So I'm going to choose like charging stations. This yeah, charging stations here, for example. Uh, so, and then uh, I want to understand different things. So I want to, una to understand like uh, 10 minutes uh, driving time, uh, allez, let's say eight minutes driving time catchment area around each uh, electric vehicle charging stations in the entire UK. I want to know uh, the uh, car traffic uh, around uh, each of the stations. So next to the, the street uh, where the, the station is being located and uh, also uh, I want to understand information about, uh, let's say, where I have um, some kind of uh, like uh, specific uh, 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 demographics uh, living nearby, and I want to know as well 
uh, the intensity of the competition, for example. So uh, let's say uh, I want to know how many charging stations are near my charging stations. So, okay, well, I will pass on, on that one, but just to give you an example. So I launched a study and it takes a few minutes to, to run, but uh, what the tool is going to do is just do again the exact same thing we've been doing before at the beginning of the webinar, just for a few locations, but for thousands and tens of thousands of locations. Yeah. And the results uh, look, uh, look like that. So, okay, so here, uh, okay, I did it for uh, uh, the coffee, uh, the coffee shop in the UK, but it's just exactly the same. So yeah. here you have like three very well-known uh, coffee chains in the UK. So like Costa Coffee, Starbucks, Pré à Manger. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, uh, uh, I like uh, five minutes walking distance around each of these coffee coffee shops, and then you can choose um, uh, um let's let's say I want to know like what is the coverage of these chains in terms of students. So you can see that you can see that in the UK you have two thousand seven million students in the UK, uh, and uh, you can see the the coverage of this. Uh, change is very different. Actually, Costa Coffee, five minutes by walk, they are covering 22% of the students of the UK, while Starbucks is covering only 15% and Pré à Manger, 7%. Okay, so let's say I'm, uh, I'm Costa, I want to go from 22 to 23, for example. Okay. So you can go to that tool and say, uh, I want to go like to 23 uh, in terms of students. Uh, and uh, yes, and so the tool is going to find like where are the best candidate locations in order to go from 22 to 23. So if you if they want to have 23 percent of the the student population uh, within their coverage, they need to open 500 locations, for example. Okay, so maybe that's the example. I think they're already at the maximum, so that's why like uh, they need to open so many locations. Uh, they already opened are at uh, the places where you have a lot of students. That's why they already kind of reach the maximum in order to be efficient. But you can do this kind of thing uh, for like other uh, segments, uh, population segments. You can do that also uh, just selecting a target. Let's say I want to open like 10 new and I want to maximize my coverage in terms of students. Okay, and I, I don't want to open next to myself, mm. for example. Um, this uh, will tell you, okay, here are like the 10 uh, top priority uh, locations uh, where you should open in order to increase your uh, your uh, coverage for students. Okay, so like right now it's it's computing, so it's it's quite of a like very dense ecosystem, so it takes a bit of time, but here it's like okay. 10 locations. Wow. Yeah, wow. and you can see why, uh, like, uh, what, what, uh, what makes this place is unique, what makes this place is interesting. So, for example, like, number one uh, is in Nottingham. Okay, why? Here you have, you have like, two locations in orange, uh, and here you have, like, a hole. So, say, mm -hmm. you can open here one, and you can open here one, one here, for example. So, it's like, the more advanced features of the tool you can use, uh, it's more for people who want to optimize networks, want to uh, find out uh, where are like the top priority areas to go for and where are the top candidate locations to open in uh, when they want to expand, when they want to open new venues uh, and like um, have a, a general understanding, make a, a big plan for one year, two years, and then that plan will be uh, dispatched and uh, put uh, into action by the operational people, uh, which are actually also using CMAPS, but on the more uh, um, uh, operational part of the tool, which uh, uh, I did at the beginning of the webinar. Right, and you're all kind of speaking the same language, looking at the same data. Um, this is, it's very impressive how it can combine all those different criteria and run these complex queries uh, in such a user-friendly feeling interface. Well, um, just in the interest of time, I do see some questions coming in from the audience. Um, for folks who do have to hop off, don't worry, we are recording this. Um, so if you have asked a question and you have to hop off, um, you'll get the recording via email. 
Um, but let's just take a couple more minutes to look through these questions together, Michael. Um, so let's see, we've covered a couple of these already in your presentation. Um, we've got a question here. Can you share more about your thoughts on the Mapbox Movement Activity Index uh, and how you changed from using absolute volume data of footfall to the activity index? I think they noticed in your screen you've got activity you know, footfall index versus kind of volume data. What are some pros and cons of using these two types of data? How easy is the index to interpret and work with? Okay, thanks for the question. So uh, originally we were using absolute volumes with other data providers. Uh, so basically you go to a street and you have an estimation of how many people are passing by. Um, so the problem of, of this approach uh, uh, of two kind, number one, uh, uh, you don't completely uh, comply with the regulations in terms of uh, the protection of the privacy of users. Uh, and, and, and secondly, uh, you have distortions uh, because the, the size of the sample uh, is not, uh, and actually a very far from it, is not as big as the size of the sample we are using with uh, Mapbox. So if you go with, uh, with the Mapbox movement data, you have an index, so it's not absolute volume, but this index is a lot, uh, of a lot higher quality and, uh, and uh, very, uh, very uh, close to what's happening actually on the ground. Uh, that uh, what you, you you can have using a smaller, a much smaller sample of telephones, uh, which can have like some distortions. So uh, I think it's sometimes it's better to uh, to, uh, to 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 choose uh, like the, the, the safety uh, over uh, just uh, uh, like over promising uh, in terms of counting people. Like the only way uh, to count people effectively. Uh, actually is, is to go on the ground and count them with a the counter or to work with uh, telecom operators, uh, which are actually also selling this kind of data, but uh, the pricing is, uh, is not the same. Uh, and, uh, and also uh, having it in like a very quick to use and easy to use way, uh, yes, it's not something which is currently available. Mm. Well, great. Glad to hear the, the benefits of using the index. Um, what's the experience yes, yes, been like yes, working with the index? Yes, Does your team uh, like to work with it? Yes, so I, we actually, we, we had feedbacks already you know, for, uh, from our users because uh, some of our users already have access to the activity index of Mapbox <laughs> and the feedback were excellent, uh, actually. So, yeah, so we are, we, are, we, we, we before we gave access, we, we tested it internally and yes, quite intensively. Uh, we, Looking at the uh, numbers at the places uh, we were familiar with, uh, uh, and we are really happy. But uh, like uh, we had uh, like a real feedbacks from real users, and actually uh, uh, feedbacks are, are completely positive on that. So we so I think this was definitely a good choice. Mm, fantastic! That's the real test, right? Do your clients actually validate that it's uh, it's useful all around the world where they're they did. testing it? Um, great. Okay, we've got a couple more questions here. Um, how often does Symaps update your data sets? Oh, the, the movement data is updated once a year. So uh, our, our users uh, take decisions, uh, uh, long-term decisions. Uh, so they, they want to open a venue, no, not for uh, a few weeks, but for usually a few years. Uh, and, and they want to have uh, yearly average. That's why uh, we just uh, look at yearly averages in terms of uh, movement activity index. Um, the other advantage of using uh, yearly averages, like uh, the size of the elephant is even the size of the sample of elephant is actually very uh, like, um, extremely large. Uh, and then uh, we are like kind of uh, making the connection with the, uh, the reality of the industry. So there is no distortion. Mm. So it kind of depends a little bit on what sort of range of time your clients are looking at, making sure you're updating the data. As yeah. They need. yeah, technically speaking, it will be possible to do it uh, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or on a monthly basis. Um, so if uh, some, uh, some, some people uh, have projects uh, which need this kind of data, uh, we are open uh, to discussion. Mm. Gotcha. Um, all right, I think let's, we have time for maybe one more question here. 
Um, we'll try to get to some of the other ones just in text answers, folks. Uh, but uh, Michael, what is something that customers can do with SIMAPs that is hard or impossible to do with other tools? What's like like the, the differentiator that you love to just call out to folks um, that set SIMAPs apart? Uh, I think there are like two things, uh, three things. Uh, number one uh, uh, is uh, like connecting data blocks together. Uh, you want to you want to know uh, the number of people uh, like the, the, uh, passing by a certain street, uh, but you want also to combine that with uh, like number of students, and you want to combine that with the number of uh, uh, sushi bars, for example. Like uh, plugging uh, together, connecting together uh, the three data blocks uh, is not as easy, uh, and uh, like allowing users to do it in a very simple way and very quickly and very intuitively is something which is uh, uh, like very regularly uh, uh, mentioned by our users uh, as a uh, key thing for them to when they, when they, they, they like to using the tool. Uh, second thing is like uh, uh, doing this at scale. If you want to uh, contextualize uh, locations, not just one or two, but uh, 1,000, uh, 10,000, uh, or even more. Uh, and like you want to do it like quickly, uh, and uh, and then you want to access the data, you want to download the data, and then you want to use the data to maybe uh, find similar locations. We have a feature called find similar locations. Um, like SIMAP is quite handy to use. Uh, you can quickly understand like uh, what, the, what the big picture in terms of the supermarket, uh, industry uh, in the US, uh, the toy industry, for example, like the uh, like the uh, maybe some sport industries. You can understand like I want to understand all the soccer clubs in the UK, uh, understanding the demographics, uh, the frequentation, uh, and and the uh, and the environment. This is very quick to do uh, using CMAPS. And this kind of thing usually takes weeks. Uh, it takes weeks, and it's not easy, uh, even in terms of compute, uh, comp computing. Uh, you need specific software, and specific skills, and, uh, and and a lot of computing power to do. This is the second thing. And the third thing, which you can do like really easily, is uh, uh, like compute uh, cannibalization, uh, and actually, which is a word for uh, internal competition. So let's say uh, you're your Costa Coffee. Uh, you want to to target uh, young professionals, uh, for example, uh, but you don't want to open next to uh, Costa Coffee, obviously. Uh, so you want to uh, you want to prioritize uh, places where you're not present yet. So this uh, requires uh, computing uh, the level of uh, cannibalization of uh, new potential location. Mm. Not easy to do. Uh, you can do it quite uh, handily uh, in CMAPS uh, and then have uh, uh, proposals uh, of expansion plans or optimization plans uh, quite easily. And, and then, if you change the hypothesis, you can do it in a few minutes. Uh, you know that often what we see is like uh, people uh, have a, a project where they need to make a plan for next year, say so how many venues we should open next year. And they, they work for like a month, and they they they, they, uh, they make a final presentation to the to management, and then the management say, okay, but let's say I change the hypothesis a little bit, okay, then you're you're here in for one more month. But if you if you do it through CMAPS, uh, you you can actually do it live. Uh, you you use the tool to do your presentation to your management, and they say, okay, you want to change the hypothesis? Okay, let's see, let's say we don't uh, focus primarily on students, but we focus prim primarily on young professional of a certain income. And then you run it and say, what happens? And then you have a different, uh, a little bit different uh, proposal. Uh, right. So it's quite interesting. Yeah, you let people play with that data live. Yeah. This whole conversation has made me appreciate so much more the complexity of these retail expansion strategies and the kinds of queries that folks are running uh, across your different clients. So thank you so much, Michael, for joining us today and you, showing us how you're taking the sometimes kind of abstract movement data and applying it to very tangible use cases and business questions. 
Um, thank you uh, so much for the demos. Thank you everybody for joining live and your questions. Um, and yeah, this was great. Let's keep the conversation going. So folks, if you have additional questions, feel free to put them in the text. We'll, we'll do some follow up still, just kind of a couple more minutes. Um, but in the interest of time, I think we've got to we've got to hop off now. Um, thanks again, Michael. Yeah, thanks, Marina. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye bye. Bye.